So early. Say something. Ah, hello. Hi. Are we recording? We are recording. Oh my god, you do it to me all, every time. It's, it's part two of <clears throat> Terminator 2, the podcast. I've got something in my throat, I sound a bit weird. After <clears throat> a two week <coughs> hiatus. Hiatus, yeah. Why was that hiatus, Ellie? Um, well, we had technical problems with the microphones. We still have technical problems with microphones. We still ha Ethan is actually holding his microphone right now because he's missing an arm. We're missing a boom <laughs> arm. Two microphones out of the four are down and broken. Soon to be repaired, hopefully. Yeah. I was clinically depressed. <laughs> and still am. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well to the two minute Terminator. Way, welcome back. Dismantle the Terminator films two minutes at a time. Yeah. I'm Ethan McKinley. I'm Ellie Fitzgerald. No one wants to know that. And I'm not depressed. You're not depressed. I'm just trying to actually. I'll just, I'll just carry it through. As with talking, I'm going to try <laughs> and figure out a way of balancing this mic. He's going to, he's so going to fashion himself a, a makeshift arm. So yeah, of we're sorts. on the next two minutes. We are on the next two minutes. And uh, it's actually quite exciting because we get introduced to uh, the future, the future soldier, John. Future AKA. Soldier John. Future Soldier John. Uh, Future Soldier John actually is uh, played by Michael Edwards. Oh God, you and your facts. Yeah. See what I've done uh, for this episode. Every time when I've made notes this time, if ever like in the last uh, Terminators we were like talking about an actor, we had to look them up in the middle of a show. I've actually put the links in all of my descriptions and like notes uh, basically to find them. Really? However, sadly. <laughs> I haven't seen any of them. I know, and the internet's not working very well today, so I've just clicked the link. And it won't work. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably because you're tethering. It is. I'm because my internet sucks kind of a fat dick. <laughs> podcast as we speak. Can I just give a shout out, by the way, to Sky and just say how fucking shit you are? Um, don't ever get Sky. It's bad. I don't. Well, I think your package is actually bad. Well, it's a sport. They got a sports package, so. Well, sports. You think it'd be faster? <laughs> if we're talking about. <laughs> But it's whenever the, whenever the boys are in the house and they're watching TV, that's when it's particularly bad. But there's not even anyone in today. And there isn't. it's still pretty, pretty <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, so um, before I start on this, actually, isn't there some kind of Comic-Con coming up in September in Sheffield? Uh, yes, the Sheffield Comic-Con. Yeah, we should go. We should go. We've got T-shirts printed up. We do indeed. We're working on getting more T-shirts printed up. John Nichols, you will be the first to get one. <laughs> for sending in all the lovely artwork. Thank you. Oh my God, we should get the artwork on the T-shirt. We should. It's just like a weird like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we should go to that and slap like. Oh, what what's going on with the stickers? Are we going to get stickers? What happened with the stickers? Bernie, my sticker man, is moving a house at the moment. Oh, sweet Jesus! So he's moving to Kent. Okay, so, so we'll be about be about a year before we get the stickers. I mean, it's <laughs> nothing. I don't think that can't be done over email. They just need re, I think, resizing slightly, and then I need to speak to somebody who actually prints on vinyl. I was going to say we need to find just a completely paper different printer. <laughs> wasn't cutting the mustard. Yeah, they're so, they're, yeah. they're pretty flimsy. They are pretty flimsy. Like my knowledge on Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've got the first two minutes, and like I said, we've got the uh, the old school John Connor looking very... Which is Michael Edwards, of course. Grim. And um, what else was Michael Edwards and Ethan? Well, like I said, I could tell you, but uh, your internet is down. Do you want to use mine? Uh, no. Because it'll be just my internal then internet. Because ultimately we'll be actually Googling Michael Edwards, which is what hamstrung the last show. Because I can give a fuck, mate. Just no, I look. couldn't either. Uh, it's not important. It's a small screen. We'll, too. we'll talk about him at another episode. Another, he, but he doesn't feature in any other part of the movie. He do, ah well, this is where you're wrong because in the Skynet edition of Terminator Two, which I haven't seen, he appears in that weird alternate ending that was scrapped by Cameron, mainly because the old lady makeup on Linda Hamilton sucked, and it was also a bit too jolly. Oh no, you did they're show in, me that. In the kids' playground. Yeah. She's got like uh, basically polystyrene egg boxes sellotape to her face and they think that's going to pass for making her look old shame on you Stanwyck a bit like Heather at the end of Highlander the only time you've dropped the ball <laughs> <laughs> well, but, well you died of course she that. looked pretty ropey who? Heather in, in Highlander yeah that was when uh, they made her look old I was like oh <laughs> yeah they could have done a bit better that was just like sellotape and, <laughs> and Quaker Oats wasn't it's, it it's like um, when Alan Partridge tries to make himself up as a zombie Connor I don't want to die <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ellie saw Highlander last night, which I, uh, it's one of those iconic 80s films, but 
It was so bad. It's not really that great, is it? It's really quite bad. Yeah. (laughs) There were, I don't know, I kind of liked some parts of it. I couldn't tell you exactly what those parts are. (laughs) But um, I'm glad I saw it. I actually got to finally hear the original... What's your feeling? It's the quickening. I think if they do... uh, (laughs) What's your feeling? It's the quickening. (laughs) You cannot die of a cloud. That was probably the the, the highlight for me. What, Sean? That and almost seeing Heather's tits. You but see a bit of nipple. You did. I didn't see Tiny any top. nipple. No, you see the nipple of the other chick in present day, but you didn't see Heather, the initial wee bot- when, Scottish bonnie I think when Sean Hurry lass. initially leaps over the rock so he goes, hello, I'm Juan Jorge Ramirez. Yeah. He goes, you. I want you. Yeah. Uh, I th- you see a little top of nipple, like I a d- half I circle. Don't... A bit like the half like a, moon on like your... Like a crescent on your, moon. Yeah, on, <laughs> on, your, on your nail. You saw a bit of Heather's nipple. Yeah, that yeah. that was enjoyable. Um, and then there was the really terrible sex scene. I think all the stuff back in Scotland was interesting. I like the transitions when it came out of the fish tank and into the lake. Oh, yeah, that was cool. That Some was of the awesome. cinematography was pretty awesome. And I think if they did another Wolverine film, that's probably how they should tackle it, where you can't see going back and forth between times. And what was the baddie's name in it? The actor? Uh, Clancy Brown. Happy Halloween, ladies. Ah, oh, my ah, God. His one-liners ah, were fantastic fucking amazing i actually really enjoyed that it was quite slapstick wasn't it uh, yeah clancy brown of course some starship troopers he's in bad boys the sean penn kind of like uh, Not seen bad boys. reform school prison movie from 1983 he's obviously uh, the kurgan in uh, highlander in yes. fact i think starship troopers is probably the first movie i've seen where he's not playing like an actual baddie i mean he's a bit of a badass at the beginning and he's quite yeah. tough isn't he got this tough exterior but at the end of it he's all smiling and laughing and yeah i killed the ah. killed the bugs the, the weird bug thing he rips up his uh forms when he's trying to leave the army yeah he's Is just it? like Have you sign this yeah <laughs> i didn't see you sign it <laughs> <laughs> anyway let's yeah. give michael edwards one more try because yeah. he did play the adult john connor he did the, indeed the best john connor i don't know we've had christian bale we've had uh We've had Nick Stahl, who played John Connor in the third Terminator, which I guess we'll come to with gritted teeth. <laughs> I'm so dreading that. I was actually having a debate at work the other day, and it is universal that Terminator 2 is the best movie, then Terminator 1, then Genesis. Oh, really? Then um, 4, and then 3. Well, gen- well I mean... Genesis, they don't really relate to one and two anyway, in a sense, do they? No, but if we're going to do it all as like a whole kind of... A little bit like the Highlander films, which is... How have they managed to get six movies out of that? Well, this is the thing. You should watch the Highlander films because the Terminator is a little bit like that when like... Really? I think the property's either been given up by a studio or lost through some legal wranglings because I think originally Terminator was owned, was, was released by Orion and now the Terminator films are released by MGM. And if you buy Terminator 1 on DVD, uh, if you buy Terminator 2, especially, the, I think those two, I think they're on MGM uh, home video. Mm. So I guess MGM absorbed Orion when it went bust. I can give but it's mate. the case of like a million <laughs> different people owning the rights over the years, I think, and wanting to redo the films and make sequels, but not have the talent of James Cameron to kind of pull it off. Do, 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 James Cameron. Did you ever put that in? He's raising the bar. I did. It was the end of one of the last episodes. I think it was actually the end of... The end? It was either the end of the end or it was the end of the last episode. No, the end of the end was... Why do all the mercies... Yeah. Maybe it was the end of the end. Maybe it was the penultimate episode. (laughs) Okay, cool. So, how are you doing with your finding facts on... Uh, Oh, you've got IMBD up. Go. Uh, He's in Mommy Dearest, which is obviously the... uh, Based on Bette Davis's life and her long-suffering daughter, uh, which I think was Faye Dunaway. Uh, he was in an episode of Silk Stalkings. His, his, his career, this is Michael Edwards, by the way, if you just joined us, the uh, man who plays John Connor in the uh, montage beginning of Terminator 2. Even Rocky had a montage. Silk Stalkings, montage. which is, I guess, a sexy kind of like detective show in America. Uh, uh, he Silk did, what? He did one episode playing Digger. <laughs> Not the digger, so digger might be a character name, not it just the like guy a digging name. the ditch. Uh, 1996, that appears to be the last acting job he did for television. Uh, he was in a video called Sweeper. Oh, man. The Sweeper in 1996. He played Ramirez. In 1994, he's in a film called Thunder in Paradise, the TV series, two episodes in 94. 
He's had a career like me, this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, he's in an episode of Frasier uh, called Almond. One episode in 1993. Uh, I'm just listing every credit he's got here because there's so few of them. Uh, <laughs> Beverly, Hills, <laughs> Beverly Hills 90210. We played Grip in 1992. Was Beverly Hills 90210? Uh, Thunder in Paradise is uh, a Hulk Hogan movie. So there we go. Mm. And he played a ju- judge in the film Queen in 1993. Terminator 2, I guess, was a highlight. Uh, yeah, he was he was Ted Giebler in 1981's <laughs> Mommy Dearest. Ted Giebler, what a name. Giebler. Uh, the Day the Bubble Burst, a clairvoyance assistant. So he was on the up with yeah. Mommy Dearest. That's quite a big deal, that film. And then clairvoyance assistant uh, a year later. So he didn't get another job for another year. This is so reflective of my acting career. <laughs> this is actually quite painful to read. Michael, re- reach out to me, man. Let's talk. <laughs> He's, he's dead now. Uh, it's a living <laughs> in 1985. So three years have gone by before he got a job again. Uh, he was the handsome juror. And he played Richard in the Karen Carpenter story, the voice of Richard in 1988. So three years go by. And then Terminator 2 in 91. And sporadic t- TV parts. But that's not the interesting thing. And uh, as we have talked for 10 minutes of absolute waffle, we should discuss... Uh, the minutes we're talking about, we are Indeed. actually talking about uh, minute two to minute four. So it's those two minutes bridging those gaps. Indeed. And boy, have I got some facts for you, Ellie. Oh, God. See, this is so unfair. You've got all the facts and I've got nothing. Well, I thought that's what I th- that might be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with them. Hit me. Uh, okay. So. Uh, this Fact attack. As John Connor is surveying <laughs> the battlefield and we're like doing this slow pulling on him. There's a guy next to him in a kind of like uh, helicopter air gunner's helmet and he's got two like night vision green eyes. Mm-hmm. Can you see that? Is that Patrick? Uh, is it Patrick? No, it's not. It's, uh, oh my God. Yeah, the gunner next to John Connor is a Lightstorm special uh, projects director, Steve Quayle. And who the fuck is he when he's at home? Uh, Lightstorm, which is uh, James Cameron's kind of like entertainment uh, organization. A bit like George Lucas has Industrial Light and Magic that does all the uh, like special effects, which started off in the Star Wars films with Joe Johnson and people. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, Richard Edlund, who went on to do Ghostbusters special effects. Uh, so, he's like Quayle, so he's like behind the curtain stuff. He is, yeah. He yeah. kind of is the special projects director. What the special projects, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that is Steve Quayle, the special projects director. So do you think he asked to be put in the movie? Or do you think James Cameron put him forward for it? And was just like, have your little moment of spat like. Well, I th- they're little in jokes, aren't they? They just like like Peter Jackson appears in the in the, all the Lord of the Rings movies. There's like yeah. a tramp or a dwarf or a, one of those pirates on the ship in the third one who has that like really badly acted death scene. Pirates on the ship. There's no pirates in Lord pirates of the Rings. Pirates on the ship. It's like Jim Morrison. Uh, the rear projection work here is prevalent, which we saw obviously in uh, Terminator One. Please feel free to interject. Cause I'm just like you know telling you facts here. I've, I've got absolutely. I've just got absolutely nothing. <laughs> all I have are my eyes. So uh, I'm just going to watch well and this pick is up on the, the things I'm The battle that we about. open with, <laughs> uh, the foreground obviously is actors shooting uh, blank firing guns. They've added in the lasers afterwards. Mm. The hunter killers like here hanging in the air and the tanks, these are all like quarter scale miniatures. They're a miniature about three or four feet high and about five feet long, which is the tanks. Uh, same goes with the flying HKs. And that's obviously a film sequence and they're just like shooting blanks at a cinema screen. And yeah. all these rocks that in front of you is just like a forced perspective miniature and some set. How did they do the lasers? Were they just like laser pens? Uh, opticals, they'll be put on after the fact by an optical effects company. Probably, um. uh, I know Fantasy 2, uh, Gene Warren Jr., who's the son of a famous special effects man, Gene Warren Sr., yeah. uh, started Fantasy 2. They did the effects for Terminator 1, which we discussed in season one of this show. And Indeed. Uh, here they are again, doing it again, but actually much better. I still think this holds up pretty well. I mean, Yeah, it can, does. It looks it amazing. It still looks great. It really does. Time- timeless, mate. Timeless. Timeless. And even though the, the listeners can't hear it, I think the music as well. I think because obviously we now know that this has the T1000 in it and it's the liquid metal. I think all the music kind of like reflects that really well because it's all like, I don't know. In the first movie, it was quite slow and it was like the kind of slow like T800, not that they have a heartbeat, but it was like a lot more slow, the music. Or it's like, mm, it's my favourite bit. Mm. In what film? The first movie. No. The thing you're referring to is the theme of the T-1000 from the second movie. Am I? Yeah. That, uh, oh, yeah, not uh, that. That's the well, T-1000. I don't know. I think the music like in the first one's a lot slower, whereas this one's a lot more kind of like Well, not necessarily faster theme, and... but it's just a bit like the Terminator heartbeat in the first one was there to yeah. denote the Terminator. Yeah. That, uh, whereas this one's a lot more slick. Yeah. Because there's liquid metal in it. 
that like I'm trapped in some alien body because I've got MS. I'm trying to communicate. Because <laughs> uh, I've got MS. That's the Terminator T1000 theme. Isn't that something <laughs> that's just special? Uh, another thing, Ellie. As uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on from special needs and MS. Now I was going to say another good thing about the rear projection, which I'm not sure if we quite see. Uh, obviously, that's rear projection. And uh, what was I going to say? There's a scene actually where you see the Terminator is like walking and turning around and shooting yeah. guns which there's that really cool like uh, image when the Terminator is shooting guns at the camera oh my god that's the same gun that's my that my toy has yeah that's awesome on the I've, I've recently got a gift a Terminator toy um, and he's got like a little backpack and a uh, Gatling gun well it's little... the what is it the NECA Terminator video game 8 bit version of the T-1000 yeah. T-800 and T the skeleton it's and it's really got fucking the kind of cool. Gatling gun in the stand it's like the deluxe one and remarkably all the joints all the pistons work on it which i is know like it's amazing. amazing it's so cool it's almost slightly better than the alien toys and i can't believe i was going to say that but In it's actually so yeah it's yeah. so involved and it's it's quite it's quite small i guess but it's really intricate and all the parts unfortunately spoiled and it does have the little round ball feet things but they seem to work quite well when trying to balance the fucker up so <laughs> i'm uh do i'm all know, for the ball feet right you know now is, you know what's happening here eleanor um, aren't the Terminators on those long metal poles and people are walking along with them? Yeah, the two, it's a bit like labyrinth the two when foreground they... Terminators are uh, life-size puppets on the shoulders of actors. So yeah. they've got the, the walk looks human and they're obviously being rod puppeted. From actually below. on the shoulders of people? Yeah. That must have been a fucking ton. I thought, well, this is actually goes down to the actual the crotch of the Terminator. So I think maybe they're like puppeteering the legs. I think they're puppeteering the legs and they've got rods on the hands and feet. But this one in the background, obviously, get, uh, harking back even to the first movie, mm. that's a stop motion Terminator uh, on a rear projection screen. Oh, wow. See? And these two, obviously, the puppets, they're stop motion in the background. Mm. That's just oh, another puppet, he's, obviously. A, he's been murked. He's been murked. He's been murked, mate. Do you reckon you can get the, um, the ships as toys as well? Yeah. Yes. I wonder well, why I showed you one, didn't I? By the way, as uh, she introduces John Connor in the voiceover, you know when John Connor's walking through that corridor to survey yeah. the battlefield? James Cameron's brother is there. Oh, wow. He salutes him. He's the second person to salute uh, Michael Edwards playing John Connor. He's as got he goggles on his noggin. Yeah. Check him out. Let's count him. Let's how many people salute. One guy salutes. One, then two. There's two. It's the third one. It's the third guy that salutes. He's got goggles and a cap and he's, on. And he's pushing his mate up against the wall. That's James Cameron's brother. He looks a bit rapey. He looks a bit rapey. He does. Uh, it's Mike. Ca it's Mike Cameron, and the corrosive uh, scar or the the burn on John Connor's. I was going to say, where are all these scars and things from? Uh, well, obviously to show it's just storytelling, isn't it? Visually, so he's been in a few battles. They actually uh, make a notation of that in the fourth film, and the Terminator kind of the white hot Terminator scratches down Christian Bale's face, doesn't it? Exactly like that. God. So and then bad. there's that really bad scar makeup, which looks shitter than the scar makeup in the 1991 <laughs> yeah. Terminator 2 version. Uh, yeah. Well, Jason, that's the difference between Jason James Clark Cameron and John not Connor. James Cameron. It just didn't look good. That scar he had, no, it looked no. shit. But this is the same technique. It's called. Uh, bear with me. It's uh, God. It's sleeping. <laughs> Drum roll, Ethan. Uh, it's clued on makeup. Clued and they kind on. Of, they put it on people's faces and then they treat it with some chemical and it kind of it kind of like corrodes and burns. There's a divot in. in there. Yeah, it creates a divot in the skin. So that's how his uh, scarification was done. The same technique was developed for Platoon when Tom Berenger's Sergeant Barnes had that scarred up face. Ah. So it's the same thing they've done on uh, old. Michael Edwards here. Oh, old Michael Edwards. How old was he when he made this movie? Well, he didn't make it, but how old was he when he was in it? His age is not on IMDb, sadly. Oh, that's a shame. He does look a bit, like, haggard, doesn't he? He does. That's kind of how I wanted John Connor to look in the new movies. Get Michael Richards back. Yeah, I know, totally. Although, how old would he be now? Probably past it. Actually, he's dead. Well, Arnold's, Arnold's past it. Arnold. He's still making uh, Terminator films. So Arnold looks good still when he's got the grey hair. Steve it's when he it's when he dyes it. That's when it just looks bad. <laughs> do we think he's done hair plugs, or do you reckon that's all his own hair? I think it's his own hair. It's just very fine now. Yeah. And it's kind of receded about an inch. Yeah. So when he dyes it really brown, he just makes his forehead look really. Yeah, big. and it's like a really prominent hairline. And it makes the hair look even like older than it actually is because it's got all this like weird color through it. So yeah, that's the uh, the first. Four minutes. Do you not kinda. find that actually the way he's looking around in this particular scene, he looks like a Terminator? Yeah. That's very kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the first movie when he's intended. in the car Maybe and he looks intended. around and he kind of 
you know, when he moves his eyes first and then he moves his head, he's kind of surveying. I thought that looked quite Terminatory. <laughs> Maybe he picked that up from Pops. Maybe he was directed. <laughs> Fucking yeah, well, that that that, that continuity doesn't exist in this. That's an ultimate timeline in Terminator Genesis. Don't Sorry, touch me. Touch your hands. That was weird. Um, uh, the titles, Ellie. Do you know how these were done? All the flames and fire. Uh, projection. Uh, no, it's undercranked, so the camera's filming at a high. What's undercrank? Uh, when they film something, but they have the camera running at a high frame of frame rate or faster film going through the camera. So when they play it back, it looks really slow motion. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but we can come to that. In the next show. Oh, why not now? Uh, because it's part of the next show. We actually, the minute ends, basically. Uh, sadly, uh, when it says kind of Terminator 2. And then, you, yeah, but you do see Arnold Schwarzenegger come Arnold Schwarzenegger's name. Uh, yeah, this is basically just gasoline, just blown up, exploding gasoline. And they just filmed it in slow-mo. Oh, wow. uh, done by Robert and Dennis Skotak, who were twin brothers. And they did a lot of the visual and practical effects for Aliens. Uh, oh, awesome! So I think they know, they know James Cameron basically from his uh, his Roger Corman days. Joe Morton, of course, playing Miles Dyson. His name comes up. That's the very last thing we see at the end of this two minutes. Uh, Joe Morton, of course, is the acclaimed uh, black actor from. Was well, Linda what? with James at this point now? No. So it was after Terminator Two that they hooked up. Uh, they did, yeah. I mean, we can look that up. We're going to break uh, tradition here and uh, look something up because I didn't make a note of that. Yay! Hey, that's what you're here for. I followed your plans. Linda. Damn Hamilton. you, Captain Hindsight. <laughs> I thought it would have been after the first movie. Nothing working. When she was, like, young and full of... Uh, it wasn't between Terminator... Booth well, on her. It was after Terminator 2 because I think we discussed it in an episode. That's what I'm trying... And I, then he I married that other lady and here we go. Let's have a look at Wikipedia. The Wikipedia. James Cameron, 97 to 99. Oh, wow. So they bu- they got married after Terminator 2. Wow. So I reckon But Cameron you reckon they were been... fucking before? No. Really? Yeah. I think he'd been working on her for years after Terminator 2. Like, I've got to get Linda. I've got to get Linda. Because guys out there, you'll know this, won't you? <laughs> like, you'll meet a girl and, uh, you know, she may not put out immediately. So eventually... She's playing the pussy game. Yeah. And yeah, but beca- why go after a chick that plays the pussy game? Because then it becomes a matter of pride and resentment. You just stick with it just so you can get the job done. Just so you can, like, done it. And that's, you know... That seems like a lot of effort. I think that's maybe what was happening with James Cameron. She was <laughs> like, he was going to career like Linda. And he's like, I need... To, what's my way in with this woman? What can I do? So you think he preferred her? the more kind of sinewy ripped looking Linda Hamilton yeah to the, the mullet Linda Hamilton <laughs> turned out one he's like oh god how the fuck did I cast this hose <laughs> hand how can I fuck this bitch yeah so it was the it was the vest it was the hat it was the <laughs> the Madonna arms it was the Madonna arms the Madonna arms and like, the veiny hands get me some of that <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> if you had to fuck Linda in the first movie or the second which would you oh it's gonna be first no, I'd probably say second. Really? Yeah. Why? <sighs> Once a girl goes over Look, the age I of 27, dude, you're done. I don't like... I, Linda's fine, but I, she's not my cup of tea, so I would... No, like, you'd rather have fucked her fat mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon yeah. she's got puffy nipples? I don't know. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen a little glint in your eye this well, show. You see <laughs> no, she hasn't, because you've seen them in one, don't you? Maybe you do, I don't know. No, not Linda. Linda's fat mate. Who knows? You know, honey, in a hundred years, who's going to care? This is true. She might have big, fat, puffy nipples. So, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode. That'll be episodes uh, four to six. There'll be a lot more energy, hopefully, as uh, we actually get into the movie, because there were some amazing facts coming up. Uh, Ellie's going to interject more and be more funny, hopefully. <laughs> I suppose just listening to what me telling her, because that's what everyone's been complaining about. I'm learning. The facts are good. The facts are good. The facts, the facts are, are what actually facts make are the, show. the show. The oh. facts are crushing the show. And I, I am going to put them in because I sweat bullets to research this shit. Spoldner actually made a really funny comment and said, um, he was like, this Sean guy sounds like he just wants to fuck you. <laughs> it's like, oh, if only you knew. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Spoldner. The man, the man knows. We will be back. We will be back. For episode three. Da, 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 da. Hasta la vista. Da, da. I do not Want to kill all the humans? Why can't we just be friends? And love each other. Watch out for machines. They're unstoppable. 
Watch out for machines. They will rule the world. <laughs>